Tony and Jill's wedding ceremony was ready to begin. Liam's heart raced with anticipation. With a deep breath, he placed his fingers on the piano keys. Liam's skilled fingers danced across the keys of the piano. The gentle strains of Here Comes the Bride filled the air with a sense of magic and romance. Natalie and Bryce cast their glances toward Liam, and their proud hearts were full of love. It truly was a surprise. Tony's eyes glistened with tears as he watched Liam play. He was overwhelmed by the depth of emotion in this simple yet beautiful gesture. Guests rose from their seats, their eyes trained on the bride, Jill, as she waited to make her way up the outdoor aisle. Jill's eyes widened in surprise when she recognized the melody. She turned to Liam and smiled. Then she began her walk toward Tony and the minister. Tony stood at the altar. His heart pounded with excitement as he watched Jill approach. Their eyes met, and a wave of emotion washed over him. He felt as though the world had stopped just for them. Jill reached Tony's side and met his gaze with a tearful smile. Her hand reached out to tightly grasp his. He squeezed Jill's hand reassuringly. The final notes of the bridal song echoed through the air, and Liam couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. His secret plan had been a success. Standing side by side, Tony and Jill clasped each other's hands, their gazes locked in unwavering devotion. When it was time to speak their vows, their voices trembled with emotion. Tony said his vows first. Jill, from this day forward, I promise to love you unconditionally, to cherish every moment we share, and to support you through life's challenges. I vow to honor and respect you, to be your rock in times of need, and your partner in all of life's adventures. With all that I am, I give you my heart, my soul, and my unwavering commitment, for as long as we both shall live. And then it was Jill's turn. Tony, as we stand here today, surrounded by love, I pledge to be by your side through every joy and every sorrow. I promise to nurture our relationship, to laugh with you in times of joy, and to stand by you in times of sorrow. I vow to cherish and uphold the love we share, to be your confidant, your partner, and your best friend. With all that I am and all that I have, I give you my love, my loyalty, and my devotion for all the days of my life. With their vows spoken, Tony and Jill sealed their promises with a tender embrace. Tony took Jill's hand in his. His fingers trembled slightly as he slid the ring onto her finger. Wear this ring as a symbol of our eternal commitment to each other. Jill's breath caught in her throat as she felt the cool metal of the ring against her skin her eyes brimming with tears of happiness. With a trembling hand, Jill reached for Tony's hand and slipped the other ring onto his finger. Wear this ring as a tangible symbol of our eternal bond. Tony took Jill's hand in his. Their fingers interlocked in a tender embrace. I love you, Jill. Tony whispered. I love you too, Tony. Jill replied, her voice choked with emotion. Their hands remained intertwined as they exchanged a knowing glance. It was a moment they would cherish forever, a promise sealed with precious metal and heartfelt vows. With a radiant smile, the minister gazed upon Tony and Jill, his voice filled with somnity and joy as he pronounced, By the power vested in me, he proclaimed, I now pronounce you husband and wife. A wave of anticipation swept over the gathered guests. Their eyes were fixed on the newlyweds with eager anticipation. At that moment, time seemed to stand still, as if the entire world held its breath in anticipation for the next chapter in Tony and Jill's love story. The silence was shattered by the thunderous applause of the guests. Tony and Jill beamed with happiness as they turned to face their loved ones. Their hearts overflowed with gratitude for the outpouring of love and support. They clasped hands tightly, their fingers intertwined as they embraced the moment knowing that they had embarked on a journey that would last a lifetime. With a twinkle in his eye, the minister glanced between Tony and Jill. He gave them a playful smile. Oh, well, folks, he chuckled. I think we all know what comes next. Tony and Jill shared a sheepish grin. Their cheeks blushed with amusement and embarrassment. Right, Tony murmured. He smiled at Jill. I guess we should probably kiss, huh? 
Jill's laughter bubbled up as she leaned in closer to Tony. <laughs> I think it's tradition, she teased. The guests erupted into laughter and cheers, a release from the anticipation of Tony and Jill sharing their first kiss as husband and wife. Tony and Jill leaned into each other. Their lips met in a tender embrace that sealed their union before their friends and family. The kiss was sweet and heartfelt, a testament to the love and commitment they shared. The minister chuckled softly and shook his head in amusement. Ha <laughs> ha, I thought that was implied, he quipped. The guests laughed again. Tony and Jill gazed into each other's eyes. They knew that their journey together was only just beginning. The soft glow of fairy lights illuminated the wedding reception. Laughter and conversation filled the air as friends and family members savored the beautiful atmosphere. Everyone eagerly awaited the arrival of the newlyweds. I must say, the venue looks absolutely stunning, remarked a friend of Jill's as she sipped her champagne and admired the decor. Another guest nodded in agreement. She sampled a delicious appetizer from the nearby buffet table. And the food is simply divine, she added. The subtle melodies of a live band created a calm pre-dinner atmosphere. Guests swayed to the rhythm. It's like something out of a fairy tale, remarked one of Tony's buddies as he surveyed the scene with awe. I can't wait to see Tony and Jill when they arrive. Where are they anyway? And as if on cue, the guest had his answer. Ladies and gentlemen, Bryce's voice carried through the reception with authority and warmth. May I have your attention, please? The guests turned their heads towards Bryce. Their chatter faded into a hushed anticipation as they awaited his announcement. It is with great pleasure, Bryce continued as a smile spread across his face, that I introduce to you for the first time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Tony and Jill Crestline. A round of enthusiastic applause erupted from the guests. Tony and Jill entered the room with their hands clasped together and their smiles radiant with joy. They made their way through the crowd and basked in the warm congratulations and well wishes from their loved ones. Bryce stepped forward to greet them. He lifted a flute of champagne. Congratulations, you two, he announced in a voice filled with genuine happiness. Here's to a lifetime of love and happiness, Tony and Jill. The band elevated the sound of their music to indicate that it was time for the couple's first dance as man and wife. Tony and Jill took to the dance floor. With grateful steps and tender embraces, they moved together in perfect harmony. They were lost in the moment and in each other's arms. I love you, Jill, Tony whispered. His voice was soft and filled with emotion as they swayed to the music. Jill smiled up at him. Her eyes sparkled with love and happiness. I love you too, Tony, she replied. Her voice was barely above a whisper as they moved as one across the dance floor. After the newlywed couple's dance, guests settled into their seats for dinner. A buzz of anticipation was punctuated by the clinking of silverware and the rustle of napkins. At a signal from Bryce, the room fell silent, and everyone turned their attention to the bridal table. Bryce rose from his seat with a glass of champagne in hand. His eyes sparkled with warmth and affection. Bryce's voice was steady and confident as he addressed the gathered guests. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. I want to take this moment to offer a toast to the happy couple, Tony and Jill. He turned to Tony and Jill, who sat side by side at the head table, their hands intertwined in a loving embrace. Bryce continued, May your journey together be filled with love, laughter, and endless joy. The guests raised their glasses in a gesture of solidarity. To Tony and Jill, Bryce's voice rang out with a genuine affection. May you always be as happy as Natalie and I are. Natalie, sitting beside Bryce, smiled softly at her husband's words. Her heart brimmed with love and gratitude. Bryce raised his glass in a toast. To peace, happiness, and a lifetime of love, Bryce proclaimed. With glasses held high, each guest raised a toast to the happy couple. Their voices blended in a chorus of well wishes and blessings. To Tony and Jill, the guests exclaimed in unison. Their words carried across the room with a warmth that spoke of genuine affection and joy. Tony and Jill's hearts overflowed with gratitude for the love and support surrounding them. After dinner, Tony and Jill made their way to the center of the room for the cutting of the wedding cake. Tony took Jill's hand in his. Their fingers intertwined as they prepared to cut the first slice. They cut into the cake, and the room erupted into cheers and applause. The sweet scent of vanilla and buttercream filled the air. Jill took a small taste of the cake 
and her eyes lit up in delight. It's delicious, she exclaimed. Tony grinned. His eyes sparkled with mischief as he caught Mrs. Perkins and Mrs. Beasley's attention from across the room. With a playful wink, he mouthed a silent thank you to them for their help at the last minute, grateful for their support. Mrs. Perkins and Mrs. Beasley beamed with pride at the sight of Tony and Jill's happiness. The two women exchanged a knowing glance. Their bond of friendship was strengthened by their shared efforts to help make the wedding reception perfect for the newlyweds. The celebration continued into the night. Tony and Jill danced, laughed, and shared moments of pure bliss with their loved ones. They knew in their hearts that the love they shared with each other was the true icing on the cake of their perfect day. Bryce took a step back as he finished hanging a large portrait from the family's time in the Alps, a moment frozen in time with the breathtaking mountains as a backdrop. The smiles captured in the photograph mirrored the warmth that now radiated through the chalet. As Bryce's final touches were completed, the front door creaked open. Natalie entered, her eyes widening in delight at the sight before her. Liam and Bobby followed their mother with eager curiosity. Bryce! Oh, what a beautiful surprise! Natalie's joy swelled as she took in the family portrait that now held pride of place above the fireplace. It was a glimpse into their past, a piece of the very Alps that inspired their chalet. Overwhelmed with emotion, she turned to Bryce, who met her gaze with a loving smile. There's more, an image for every adventure we've had. Bryce gleamed, motioning to several other framed photos around the room. Oh, I can't tell you what this means, Bryce, Natalie marveled. Oh, after losing all our belongings in the fire, uh, this feels like the best pieces of our past brought to life here. Liam took Bobby by the hand and showed him every picture, explaining the memories that each held. And perfect timing, we have guests arriving, Natalie said. Rachel, Mrs. Perkins, and Mrs. Beasley will be here any minute to discuss plans for the new school. Bryce sashayed into the kitchen. Don't think I've forgotten about the big meeting. I made tea and picked up cookies from the bakery. Natalie joined her husband in the kitchen, thrilled by his thoughtful gesture. Oh, you're a dream. Oh, I didn't have time to arrange for snacks. Bryce smiled. I figured I could lend a hand, since you've been running around all day. Natalie thanked Bryce with a quick kiss when she heard the crew arriving at the front door. What should I do during the meeting? Liam asked as Natalie headed to let the guests in. Natalie turned to her son. You're in luck. I told Rachel to bring her kiddos over to play with you. Liam's eyes widened with excitement as Willow and Aspen burst through the door, followed by Rachel with Fern and baby Cypress. Mrs. Perkins and Mrs. Beasley trailed in behind the gaggle. The cozy living room of the chalet buzzed with warmth and chatter as Natalie, Rachel, Mrs. Perkins, and Mrs. Beasley gathered for tea. The aromatic blend of tea leaves wafted through the air, blending with the laughter of children playing and the sweet gurgles of Rachel's baby Cypress nestled in her arms. Oh, Cypress is such a beautiful baby, Rachel, Mrs. Beasley remarked. The other women adamantly agreed. Rachel smiled as she held the sleeping baby in her arms. Oh, he's a miracle baby. We're just glad he's finally healthy and thriving. Little Bobby and Fern played happily on the living room floor, surrounded by an array of toys, while Liam, Aspen, and Willow headed outside to revel in the delights of the new playscape. Natalie produced a notepad and pen, ready to get down to business. All right, let's commence our very first Montessori school meeting. Mrs. Beasley, thank you for joining us. I hope you'll consider making it a permanent transition once we get this operation up and running. Of course, I'm thrilled to be here. Before working for the school district, I taught at two Montessori schools, so I have a lot of experience, Mrs. Beasley explained. The philosophy emphasizes hands-on learning and real-world skills, viewing children as naturally eager for knowledge and capable of initiating learning within a supportive environment. That's the way I've approached homeschooling the children all these years, Rachel said, balancing her tea as she rocked the baby. I actually have a teaching certificate from before we went on the run. Oh, that's excellent news, Natalie beamed. Mrs. Beasley smiled and continued. To be honest, I've been itching to leave the constraints of the school district for years. I would love to lead the charge on the educational front. Natalie, Rachel, and Mrs. Perkins clapped with glee. They had been hoping Mrs. Beasley would be willing to lend her expertise to their ambitious project. Mrs. Perkins chimed in. You know, I was a tutor for many years in my 20s and 30s. Natalie turned to Mrs. Perkins, delighted. How do I keep learning new things about you, even after all these years? 
Mrs. Perkins chuckled. Oh, I've had a lot of chapters in this life, and more are being written as we speak. Natalie scribbled notes as they continued making plans. Mm, I'm so excited at the prospect of opening this land to the community for an adventurous learning environment. I think we can build something really magical. As the conversation unfolded, Rachel discussed the idea of building a schoolhouse near her family's homestead. I know Carter will be eager to help build a sustainable environment within the wonders of nature. That's perfect, and we can consult Biff and Amelia for the design, Natalie added. Mrs. Beasley, equipped with her expertise, offered to handle the permits and organize a recruiting event to generate interest among parents and students. The women formed a united front, confident in their ability to create a magical learning environment for the community. As the women continued to finalize plans for the new school, the sun-drenched backyard became a playground for the kids. Liam, Aspen, and Willow had tired themselves out exploring the newly installed playscape, its vibrant colors contrasting against the lush green surroundings. I've never seen anything like this, Aspen said as he hopped off of a swing. What do you usually do for fun in the woods? Liam wondered. Aspen was eager to share his world. Well, we explore, climb trees, and sometimes build forts. It's fun. Liam looked at Willow and Aspen with wonder. So, you've never been on playscapes or slides or anything? Willow shook her head. Nah, we make our own fun. Liam smiled at Willow, intrigued. Want to show me? With that, the trio ventured down to the river where the water gently flowed, creating a soothing soundtrack to their adventure. Willow and Aspen, seasoned nature enthusiasts, introduced Liam to the timeless art of skipping rocks across the water. Here, Liam, like this. Give it a try, Willow instructed. Liam, attempting to mimic their graceful throws, chuckled nervously. Huh, I'm not very good at this. You guys are pros. It takes practice. You'll get the hang of it, Aspen said reassuringly. Liam, determined to master the skill, tried again, the ripples marking his attempts on the river's surface. Willow and Aspen exchanged amused glances, embracing the joy of simple, unplugged entertainment. Willow helped Liam with his throw. See, it's all about having fun. No need for fancy toys. And that's exactly what the school will be like, learning through play and nature, Aspen added. That sounds awesome. I can't wait for the school to open, Liam beamed. Then he turned to Willow, growing shy. Hey, Willow, do you have a crush on anyone? Willow looked away, blushing. Maybe. Aspen turned to his sister, confused. How can you have a crush? The only boys you know are me and Liam. Willow, feeling the heat of embarrassment, darted towards the house. I, uh, need a drink. You guys are too much. Liam, blushing and hopeful, watched Willow disappear into the house, a newfound excitement stirring within him. The backyard, once a stage for exploration, now held the potential for the sweet blossoming of young feelings amid the trees and the laughter of newfound friends. With Liam, Willow, and Aspen returning from their outdoor escapades, the burning question of the school's fate hung in the air. Excitement surged as the women revealed that, indeed, the Montessori school was on the horizon. Cheers erupted, marking the beginning of an exciting new chapter for the community and their children. What should we call it? Willow asked. Natalie turned to Willow. That's a great question. Any ideas? I think it should have woods in the title, Aspen suggested. Liam chimed in. And I think it should have adventure. Mrs. Perkins thought for a moment, then suggested something that fit both requests. How about the Wood Claire Adventure Academy? I love it, Natalie exclaimed. The rest of the group heartily agreed. That sure sounds like somewhere I would want to go, Willow offered. Rachel smiled. Well, that's a good thing because you'll be one of the founding students. Amidst the cheerful hubbub in the chalet, the enthusiasm for the Wood Clare Adventure Academy bubbled over into a lively discussion about the new school's potential. Liam, Willow, and Aspen, eager to be part of the upcoming adventure, bombarded the women with questions. Aspen's eyes sparkled with excitement as he exclaimed, Are we going to have outdoor classes every day? Can we learn about animals and plants? Natalie, delighted by the children's eagerness, responded with a grin. Absolutely. Learning about nature and exploring the woods will be a big part of our school. Willow, with her creative spirit, chimed in. What about arts and crafts? Can we make things out of stuff we find in the woods? Mrs. Perkins, always supportive, nodded in agreement. I'm sure we can have a special corner for arts and crafts. It'll be a fantastic way to express your creativity. Aspen, holding a small stick he found outside, added, And maybe my daddy can teach us how to make things from wood. The idea resonated with the group, and Mrs. Beasley approved. 
Carter's skills would be a valuable addition to our curriculum. Learning practical skills like woodworking can be an excellent part of our program. Liam, ever the curious one, playfully raised his hand. Can we have a pet corner? Maybe even learn how to take care of animals? Rachel, rocking baby Cypress in her arms, smiled at Liam's suggestion. That's a wonderful idea. Taking care of animals can teach you responsibility and empathy. The lively discussion continued, with ideas flying around like the cozy tea-filled room was an incubator for creativity. Aspen suggested a treehouse for quiet reading, while Liam dreamt of a science corner where they could conduct experiments. Mrs. Perkins, sensing the excitement, turned to Natalie. What do you think about a vegetable garden? It could be a very hands-on way for the kids to learn about plants and nutrition. Natalie nodded in agreement. Absolutely. We can have a little garden where you can plant and harvest your own vegetables. As the conversation evolved, the women and children painted a vivid picture of the Wood Clare Adventure Academy. They discussed the possibility of inviting guest speakers from the community, organizing field trips to explore the surrounding nature, and fostering a sense of camaraderie among the students. The future of the school felt promising, filled with endless possibilities, and the women couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement about the adventure they were about to embark on together. Beneath dappled sunlight filtering through the trees, a lively energy buzzed in preparation for the Wood Clare Adventure Academy's grand opening. It had been three months since the first planning meeting, and after endless hard work and recruiting, the Clares, Woodruffs, and Perkins were finally about to see their school dream come to life. Mrs. Perkins and Natalie hurried past each other, both carrying baskets of supplies in different directions. Tick-tock, the students will be arriving soon, Natalie said, smiling through nerves. Here we go. What's the final number? Mrs. Perkins clipped over her shoulder. As of yesterday, we have 25 members joining the academy, Natalie replied. Mrs. Perkins gasped with apprehension. The first day needed to be a success. Good thing we bought extra supplies, she said, bustling off to set up. Meanwhile, Biff and Amelia stood proudly in front of the newly constructed schoolhouse, nestled in between the Clare Chalet and the Woodruff's homestead. We really do make a good team, don't we? Biff said, admiring the structure Amelia designed. Amelia put her hand on Biff's shoulder. We sure do, in our work and our life. Biff turned to Amelia, radiating love. You know, I was thinking, we work so well together. Maybe it's time to live together, too. Really? You want to move in with me? Amelia couldn't contain her surprise and excitement. Biff hesitated. Well, I was hoping you'd move into my house, since it already has the accommodations for my chair. Oh, of course, that makes sense, Amelia nodded. But your place, it's just, maybe... Biff chuckled and filled in the blank he knew Amelia was dancing around. Maybe you could redesign the interior with your artistic genius. Amelia burst into a wide grin. You read my mind. Amelia hugged him tightly. Speaking of artistic genius, I should be monitoring the kids on their paint job. I said they could follow their passion and design anything they wanted. I hope that doesn't backfire. Amelia, armed with paintbrushes, joined the kids as they finished painting the exterior of the schoolhouse. Liam, Aspen, and Willow worked diligently on their masterpieces, each with a section of the schoolhouse wall as their canvas. This looks fabulous! Amelia exclaimed. Is that a hippo, Aspen? Aspen sighed, defeated. Uh, it's supposed to be a dog. Liam examined Aspen's work. Maybe it can be a cross between a dog and a hippo. Your very own magical beast. A dippo, Willow chimed in. Aspen lit up at the idea as he reapproached his painting with newfound wonder. Liam checked out Willow's design. It was a willow tree with children gathered all around reading. I love it. Willow's weeping willow tree, he exclaimed. Willow smirked. Except mine isn't weeping, it's smiling, see? She pointed to a soft smile painted into the tree's leaves. Liam laughed. <laughs> Amazing, you're so talented. Thanks, Liam. She blushed. You're not so bad yourself. Liam lingered, taking a deep breath. Uh, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Willow's eyes grew with hope. But just as Liam mustered the courage, Carter and Bryce interrupted, unloading chairs into the schoolhouse. Great paint job, kiddos. Bryce said, taking in all the dazzling colors. Carter set down some chairs to clap his hands. I love the creativity. This will be such an inspiring setting for all the students. As Carter and Bryce departed to set up the chairs, Liam inched closer to Willow. He had been building up the bravery for weeks. This was his chance. He had to take it. Finally, he whispered under his breath, 
Will you be my girlfriend? Willow shot Liam a confused look, and he immediately regretted taking the plunge. What did you say? She asked. Liam quickly returned to his paintings. Oh, nothing. Uh, never mind. Willow slumped, disappointed. But after a few moments, she found some courage of her own. I couldn't hear what you said before, but I was thinking of asking you something, too. She turned to Liam, serious. Do you want to be my boyfriend? A rush of joy buzzed through Liam's entire body. That's what I was trying to ask you. Really? Willow blushed. So, is that a yes? Liam nodded eagerly. Yes, let's be boyfriend and girlfriend. With that, Liam reached out and held Willow's hand. She squeezed his tightly, overcome with the innocent butterflies of childhood romance. As the children completed their artwork, an SUV pulled up, revealing Jill and Tony. Yoo-hoo, gang! Jill shouted as they approached the schoolhouse. Natalie almost dropped a basket of crayons. Jill, Tony, I thought you were still on your honeymoon. Jill and Tony exchanged hugs with everyone as they explained. We came back from Fiji a few days early. Couldn't miss the grand opening of the Wood Claire Adventure Academy. Bryce grinned. That's so thoughtful. It wouldn't have felt complete without you. Now we can really kick things off. Tony set down a large camera bag. We figured as long as we're here today, maybe we should contribute to the learning environment. Natalie and Bryce turned to each other with anticipation as Jill beamed. We brought supplies to teach a filmmaking workshop. Liam, Willow, and Aspen all dropped their paintbrushes and ran over with bubbling curiosity. We're going to make a movie? Liam asked. Tony crouched down. We sure are. We thought a documentary short film about the first day at a wilderness school would be pretty cool. And maybe your parents can even use it to recruit more students. Natalie was genuinely delighted by their creative offer. That's a brilliant idea, you guys. Oh, we're so lucky to have your expertise. The kids will be thrilled. Amelia, wearing an apron now covered with paint smudges, took a step back to admire the children's artwork. Each section had become a kaleidoscope of imagination, a testament to the creative spirit of the Academy. I think this masterpiece is finished, Amelia declared. Natalie gave a thumbs up as the sound of approaching cars added a hint of urgency. Perfect timing. Sounds like we have students arriving. Upon hearing the hubbub, Rachel, Mrs. Perkins, and Mrs. Beasley rushed over to the welcome station they'd set up with coffee, juice, pastries, and orientation packages for the parents. Oh, I'm so nervous, Mrs. Perkins admitted. Mrs. Beasley squeezed her shoulder. There's nothing to be nervous about. We've thought of everything and worked so hard. Now we just get to watch our beautiful vision come to life. The schoolyard came alive with the hum of anticipation as parents and new students trickled in. The children ran around to explore while adults connected over coffee, marveling at the rustic natural setting in which their kids would be learning. As the vibrant chaos unfolded, Doug and Bryce appeared with a grand reveal, a giant ribbon and oversized scissors for a ribbon cutting ceremony. All right, folks, let's make this official. Ladies, the honor is all yours, Doug proclaimed. Natalie, Rachel, Mrs. Beasley, and Mrs. Perkins stepped forward to cut the ribbon together, officially marking the beginning of the school semester. Thank you all for being the first students in our inaugural class at the Wood Clare Adventure Academy, Mrs. Beasley said warmly to the group gathered around. Natalie joined in. Here's to new beginnings, shared dreams, and endless possibilities. Cheers erupted, and the air was filled with a collective sense of accomplishment. Amidst the jubilation, Bryce and Natalie took a moment to make a special announcement. While we have everyone here, we've got some exciting news, Natalie began. Bryce placed an arm around his wife. Natalie and I are expecting a baby girl in the spring. More cheers and congratulations enveloped the growing Claire family, adding an extra layer of warmth to the occasion. Mrs. Perkins leaned over to Natalie. Oh, I knew it, she squealed. You've had that special glow lately. Wait, does this mean... Am I getting a little sister? Liam asked with earnest hope. Natalie nodded, hugging her firstborn. You sure are, my sweet boy. Liam could barely contain his delight. A girlfriend and a little sister in one day? Awesome! Natalie and Bryce exchanged wry smiles at the unexpected reveal of a girlfriend while Liam rushed off to tell Willow the news. As parents began to bid their children farewell for the school day, the adults seamlessly transitioned into their roles as educators dividing the kids into three different groups based on age. Tony and Jill led the older kids in the art of filmmaking. All right, budding filmmakers, let's dive into the art of storytelling through film. Who's ready to make some movie magic? Jill asked the eager bunch. Bryce and Doug guided the next age group into the woods to learn about the wonders of bird watching. 
Raise your hand if you want to learn the calls of starlings and robins today. Every hand shot in the air, including Bryce's. Doug chuckled and swelled with gratitude upon getting to share his passions with an eager audience. I know what all the birds look like, but not which sounds they make, Aspen admitted as he pointed to a bird flying by. That one is a finch. Indeed it is, Doug asserted. Aspen, you can be my assistant today, since you know these woods so well. Aspen's smile beamed with pride. He'd been a little nervous to start school with such a big group of kids, but his worries faded as he introduced new friends to the magic of the forest he knew so well. Meanwhile, Natalie and Rachel created a nurturing learning environment for the youngest children, surrounded by curious farm animals in the garden. They helped the kids locate a plant or creature for every letter of the alphabet. A is for artichoke. B is for butterfly. Who can find something that starts with the letter C? Rachel cooed. While the students were exploring the wonders of their new nature school, Carter and Mrs. Perkins worked tirelessly to prepare a hearty, homegrown lunch for the entire class, emphasizing the importance of sustainable living. Carter rang a large bronze bell, which resounded throughout the property. Lunch is served, everyone! Fresh from our garden to your plate! Mozart and the Woodruff's dogs, fast friends, came bounding over first, followed by the various groups of children. Everyone gathered at a long row of picnic tables, gobbling up fresh food and sharing stories of their respective activities as new friendships began to blossom. Liam, having taken to his filmmaking class, couldn't resist capturing the lively lunch on camera for the documentary. He moved from group to group, interviewing everyone about their favorite parts of the day. Finally, he reached Bryce and Natalie. Little Bobby nestled between them, having a sweet moment of reflection. Their vision of a holistic learning experience had come to life, and as the first day unfolded, it became clear that this was quite a magical adventure for everyone. Mom! Dad! Bobby! Liam shouted, framing the three of them with his camera lens. What do you think is the best part of the Wood Claire Adventure Academy so far? Natalie chuckled, turning to Bryce as she answered. <laughs> well, our family has been through a lot over the years. Sometimes I wonder what it was all leading us to. But today... I know the answer. She motioned to the camaraderie surrounding them. We've built our own haven of learning in the most beautiful surroundings, together with our dearest friends and family. Bryce squeezed Natalie's hand as he looked at their eager son. And we have you to thank for the whole idea. Our brilliant boy. We're so proud of you. Liam swelled with pride as he zoomed in on his little brother. What about you, Bobby? He prodded the little one. Bobby smiled with a mouthful of berry pie and shouted, Hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Liam, Natalie, and Bryce all joined in laughing. As Liam hurried off to show Tony and Jill his footage, Bryce caught Natalie wiping a tear from her cheek. What's the matter, my love? He asked sweetly. Nothing. Finally, nothing is the matter at all, Natalie whispered. I'm just so happy. Husband and wife looked out at the incredible community they'd brought together basking in the joy and laughter surrounding them. Bryce placed a tender hand on Natalie's growing belly. In the story of the Claire family, I think this is going to be the brightest chapter yet. Dear listeners, this episode marks the end of the show, The Return. We want to thank our loyal listeners for joining us on this wild ride that has been The Return. It was an honor to have you along for the many adventures of the Claire family.